Hey guys, welcome to Game of Bite. We're playing Firewatch. I, I don't really know what to say about this game. I have been waiting for it for ages. And I mean a long time. Um, when I first watched like previews of it, I thought that it looked fantastic. I, I, I thought it looked amazing. I really did. And uh, it came out literally yesterday. Uh, so I thought I'm going to jump on that bandwagon. I'm going to play this and I'm going to get views. No, I'm kidding. I, I, I honestly just thought, let's buy it, let's record it, let's see what my first experience of it is. I have not yet played it. I have heard there are actually um, issues with the frame rate on the PS4 version, which is what we're playing on it. Um, if, if there is too many issues, then obviously I will stop. Um, but I, I don't seem to think there's going to be too much to, to worry about, to be honest. It still looks a fantastic game, just like it did right from the start. And I know I gush about a lot of different games looking fantastic. For example, the start of the Fallout 4 playthrough that I did, that I'm currently doing at the moment, all I did was say how fantastic it looks compared to... Um, Fallout New Vegas. Same thing I did with King's Quest. I, the the art direction in King's Quest was fantastic, but Firewatch is a whole new, another level. It just looks amazing. So we're going to play. We're going to play with the volume up as well because I do want to listen to the story. Um, and I hope you enjoy my playthrough of Firewatch. Let's go. So I am definitely looking forward to this. And I have been for a long time. And I've already said that, so I shut up. I'll uh, let the plot run through. Boulder, Colorado, 1975. Apparently we see Julia. Wait, am I supposed to do something here? Oh. She's about your age. Late 20s. Laughing with well-dressed professors and grad students from nearby CU Boulder. You... Henry, are out drinking with your pals. We approach her. You are drunk. So, I, well, I've got two options here. So what's your, you know, major? Or you, you're pretty. Let's go with the educated route. You slur the word major and it smells like cause light. You give an awkward smile. Evolutionary biology, she says. And I'm a professor. Cool, you reply. What's yours, she asks. She sniffs the air. Toxicology. Was that a burn? You ask. She says definitely. Worried she hurt your feelings, she asks if you want to split a cheeseburger. One week later, you are Julia's boyfriend. We're in there already. Good start. And we're playing. We just picked up a backpack. I'm guessing I need to go to the orange car, truck door. You date for over a year. She drives you absolutely nuts. It's great. 
You move in, you share an apartment near the school with a view of the mountains. You two drink beers on the, on, out on the deck. You drink beer just about everywhere. Life is good. Julia wants to get a dog. There's a scruffy, undersized beagle. Julia is in love. She wants to bring it with her to class. There's also an intimidating but gentle-eyed German Shepherd. Nothing bad could happen to Julia while walking this dog. It's badass. So we either pick up the Beagle and she names him Bucket or you adopt the Shepherd and name it Mayhem. We're going to go for Beagle because that's the one that she loves him. You know, we're sweethearts and we're, we're, we're in love. So, well, I don't know about being in love, but we've dated for over a year. So there must be something there. Uh, let's go with Bucket. Bucket's a good dog. And a week later, you've totally forgotten about the other one. Julia loves him. And you love him too. Sorry about this, guys. It's uh, going to be a bit of a long one, this. 1979. You talk out on the deck. It's summer. 9.30pm. And the heat still radiates off the high desert. What do you think about kids, she asks. Fuck it, I'm out. <laughs> kids, they're not very smart or good at much. I'm saying if you and I have some, a couple of little idiots. Yeah, well... I mean, I don't know. We'll say that would be pretty good, I guess. No need to rush, though, but that'd be pretty good anyway. In that case, we should probably get married. Yeah, I would like that, you say. These kids are going to be screwed up enough. It's probably best that the parents are hitched. You say that she's absolutely right. Okay. Look at the fucking art direction. Look at the fucking graphics on this. It's amazing. And I know they're not, you know, the, the I don't know. I was going to say, you know, they're not the greatest graphics, but they are. They're fantastic. The art style is brilliant on it. 1980. It's a Thursday night and Julia is four hours late. She doesn't call. You're worried and getting angry by the minute. She walks in after you've gone to bed. She's not quite drunk, but she's clearly been having a fun time. You fight when she get, you fight when she gets between the sheets. Do we get mad or do we ignore her? I mean, ignoring her is more the, more of a fucking piss piss take than getting mad. So let's get mad. Let's get mad. You call her an inconsiderate asshole. She tells you to fuck yourself and to not be such a baby. You call her selfish. She knows you mean it and it hurts her feelings. Sorry. 1981, Julia still likes to draw. She draws plants from her research. She draws all the places you go. She draws you. Shall we frolic like a Victoria's Secrets model? Let's do that. Victoria's Secret model. Very nice. <laughs> So we're moving forward. I think this is just the introduction, guys, <laughs> if I'm honest. Two forks, fire, lookout. Eight miles. Eight, well, eight more miles still. Yeah. Let's climb over obstacles. Thank you. Look at that. 1982, during the summer, you and Julia enjoy walking bucket at night. There's a festival in town. It only it brings in folks from faraway places. One of them tries to mug you with a knife. Well, hey, we're getting mugged already. 
Bucket gets kicked. B be ba fuck dog da da dog 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 Julia yells. She gets flustered and has trouble speaking when she is stressed. You confront the attacker. We beat his goddamn face in for kicking our fucking dog. Your arm gets cut up, but you beat the guy to a pulp. You don't feel very tough. You cry your eyes out before the cops show up. Julia asks to take a different path from that day forward. You say, okay, you don't want to go that way either. From then on, you walk by the river. 1984. Plans to have kids get waylaid by work. Julia gets offered a job at Yale. Yale is in Connecticut, 2,000 miles away. It's a great job, associate department chair, and she wants to move. You absolutely do not. Mm. Both of them are kind of tough choices. For convincing her to take the job, she'll she'll blame me for not for her future being ruined. However, if I do the other one and agree if she commutes back and forth, it's an impossible task, especially for 2,000 miles. It's an impossible task for me because I'm from the UK, all right? There's not 2,000 miles here, but, you know, right or left to the sea, okay? Jesus fucking Christ, calm down. It might not be for you guys, but it is for me. Shush. Okay, we're going we're gonna to do the commute one now. You ask her if she'll commute back and forth. You don't want to move to Connecticut, and she says that'll be hard, but she'll do it if you won't move. You tell her not to pass it up if that's what she wants. She agrees and she flies back to Boulder three times each semester. No idea what a semester is. I'm guessing it's a term. I'm guessing it's like two or three months. Whatever. Julia is sent home from Yale on paid leave after having an episode. She lost it on a colleague for borrowing books that were important to her research. She didn't remember she had happily loaned them to him just two days prior. She's kind of it. She was found crying in the stairwell. Let's talk to someone about it. After seeing multiple doctors and having many tests, they are worried that Julia might be suffering from early onset dementia. She is 41. You both decide to keep it a secret for now. This is going to turn into a sad story in the first fucking episode, isn't it? Okay, blur that out, guys. Blur it out. I, I need to edit something into there. Edit my face into it, please. <laughs> that's, that's funny as fuck. Anyway. Bucket is getting older. Julia comments that it's kind of nice because he gets in less trouble around the house. A week later, she goes back to university. Julia's, 1987 by the way, Julia's affliction gets worse. She can't remember things in class. Her research is in shambles. She drives a car to the next town over for no particular reason and has to be brought home by the police. She is devastated and she is sent home on permanent medical leave. This is getting quite sad actually. Some days you get the Julia who calls you a dope and your, un your unborn children little idiots. Other days you get a stranger. She pulls you into bed to make love. After five minutes she goes into a panic believing her dad is at the door. You tell her family and they are crushed and begin to make trips to and from her, their home in Australia to visit her. For a while your friends come by with little things to brighten the day. But she gets worse. You spend your days following Julia around the house. You count the seconds between the two weekly visits from Daniel, the nurse. You suggest that Julia could live somewhere else, somewhere with 24 hour cur. Care. Cur? 24 hour cur. No, 24 hour care. A home. It sits with you for a couple of months. You decide to move her into a full time care facility. No, we're not going to do it. You are determined to take care of her by yourself. Oh, look at that. It's 
Um, I, I, uh, I don't want to skip any of this. This is just all fantastic. Look at that. No idea what that is, but look at it. It's fog, I think. Anyway. Whoa. Hello. Bye bye. Pretty dear. Or stag. It is impossibly hard. The worst is when you get mad at her, like when she tries to cook her own food. You can't do anything without her and she can't do anything without you. When she goes to sleep, you stay up for a few hours, drinking on the deck, watching baseball in the summer, college basketball in the winter. Drinking then too. You start going out after you put her to bed. The first time you do it, it the first time you do it, you worry about her getting up and walking around while you're gone. I mean, we don't want to trust that she sleeps like a rock just in case. But at the same time, we don't want to seem too overbearing by putting a chair in front of the bedroom door. This is a difficult decision. Okay, we're going to trust that she sleeps like a rock. Tough decision. You go to the same bar at the boring end of Pearl Street. It's nice there. Over time, you tell Sheila, the bartender, everything. It's a huge weight off. You're home and in bed by 1am a couple of nights a week. You look forward to those nights. One night, you're stopped at a DUI checkpoint. You blow a 10... Uh, you, you blow a point ten and are taken to jail for the night. I'm guessing that's the breathalyzer test. Uh, you consider trying to hide it, but you tell your sister-in-law, Susan. Julia's parents take the next plane from Australia. They can't believe the state the ha your house is in. They, the, then they tell you Julia is coming to live with them. You don't argue. You say your visit a few weeks go by. Summer is coming up and you see an ad in the paper for a job. You take it. I think that's it guys <laughs> what this is about what a 20 minute episode almost bit of a narration there by me sorry if it's on the shit but i thought i would read it out to you yeah enter the lookout tower so next time on game of Bite, we will look enter the lookout tower I hope you've enjoyed the first uh, episode of uh, Firewatch. I know it's not been that great. It's been kind of shitty. There's no, not been many ga much gameplay. But I do promise that next episode, there'll be plenty of gameplay to go through. Unless there's more, then unfortunately not. But, you know, see how it goes. I hope you've enjoyed it, guys. And I will see you next time. Thank you and goodbye.